We're, we're joined today with the great man Des Makova, um, who's it's, he's just finishing up a few bits and pieces on his phone there. But um, but uh, this is another exciting pod, guys. I hope I hope you enjoy this one. I think Des has got a lot to share with us and a lot to offer. Um, so yeah, please get excited and get ready for the pod. We're on. Radio, right good people. Welcome back to another episode of Podcast with Perry. Um, thank you all for your continued support and um, and tuning in. We're here today, joined by um, the great man Heavy D. Heavy D. You know, um, big, big, big in our social circles, big in our communities, and and, and, a, and a great aspiring businessman who's doing great things, Desmond Makowa. Very welcome to the show. It's great thank to you. have you, boss. Thank you very much, Perry. Good what an introduction, you. eh? Great to have you. How's it going? Yeah, right? good. Good. How, yeah. how are you getting on? I'm all right. I'm all right. Just a bit warm by the oh, fire, of course. course. Just, and, uh, in just enjoying. We, you know what? We um we thought to change up the scene a bit, make it a bit cozier for our guests. You know, we might go back and forth from the bar to okay, here, yeah, yeah. But it's just it's just a nice different setting, you know. Um, I poured you your whiskey beforehand, so you so you so so you've got a drink. Yeah, I normally don't drink during the week, eh? so this is quite bad, especially at lunchtime. <laughs> but I'll take it. I'll take it. You I'll can't you can't tell the people what time we film. <laughs> it's meant to be like five p.m. You know? <laughs> okay, It'll be five p.m. Enough. to the people. You know? but, but it's fine. It's fine. Okay, it's one. It's one. Damn it! All right, but hey, hey, welcome, okay, welcome thank to you, the show. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me. It's um, it's 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 good to have you. And what and. Big reason for me having you here is I think you've got a I think you've got a hell of a story to tell, all right? And I think um and I think at a at a young age you've um you've managed to one one build a build quite a success for yourself, which is great, you know. But you've also got um an, a, a lovely way and a lovely outlook on a lot of different things in life, which 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 I think will be very valuable to the listeners. So um so I would love for you to maybe start off by introducing yourself and um. Um, you know, introduce yourself to me, maybe, and um, and 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 tell me a bit more about Des Makoa. Okay, perfect. Thanks, thanks, Perry. Um, my name is actually Vimbiso. Mm. Vimbiso Desmond Makoa. Okay. Uh, Des is the cool name. It's the one that's used on the streets, of course, but uh, it's something that people have gotten used to. Um, I mean, where do I start? Um, I've I've got a big story to tell. Um, and there's a lot to say, but I'll just explain uh, where I'm from. Uh, what I've done and what I'm trying to do, basically. Right, eh? So, just basically, uh, when you look at um, my life, I guess um, since since I was born, pretty much, um, I've, I've had a lot of um, situations uh, where I've been comfortable. I think that's the main thing. Uh, a lot of people think this is a a story about you know rags to riches. It's really not. Uh, my version is different. Um, I think I grew up pretty well off. If anything, it'll be an insult to my parents and uh, and to everyone if I said I, I grew up rough. I didn't. Um, managed to grow up in a family business. We've been in the petroleum industry for many, many years. Okay. Uh, I think since 2001. Um, so you're talking about 22 years in the industry. Um, we've managed to build a brand. Um, it was formerly called Exo Petroleum. And uh, now it's called Petromoc Exo. I'll explain that in detail as well. So we're coming from this situation where... You know, my father grew up in Mashingo, by the way. Uh, that's what I refer to as home. Home is actually Mashingo for me. Um, and it's just something that I've always acknowledged. I've always been someone who's accepted the fact and loved the fact that I'm from Mashingo. From Mash? Um, yeah, yeah, from Mash, from Mash. And, um, you know, growing up, as I said, we grew up well off. I mean, we never wanted for anything. We were fine. Um, then fast forward to um, around 2013. Uh, 25 June 2013, you know, um, the pioneer and the matriarch, uh, patriarch, is that correct? Sorry. The patriarch. Yeah. Patriarch, sorry. I mean, he passes away. Uh, this is my old man. Um, and actually, look, you have a lot of families where the old man passes away and um, a lot of things go AY. And typical, I mean, things did really go AY for some time. And so let me, let me, stop, yeah, yeah, let sure. me stop you there. Sure. So okay, so so grew up grew up from Mashingo. He went to school. Where, 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 where no, no. Well, I was, I was born and raised in Harare. Sorry, my yeah, sister was born in Bloeo. My brother in Harare, myself in Harare. So I've always been a city boy. 
And yeah, you I'm, go to school in H Town. I went to school in Rodman House first, and then uh, I went to Falcon. Uh, and then it's a good dini. Yeah, it's good dini. T- nice school, nice school. <laughs> <laughs> not <laughs> not John's, eh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. go on, but, um, go on. Yeah, no, we we managed to. Um, as I said, I grew up one off. Um, then obviously the patriarch passes away, and life does really change. I mean, you go through some serious adjustments, and I've got a lot of people to thank for those adjustments. Because so, and how I old were you at this time, Des? How old uh, were you? Twenty thirteen. I was twenty three. Okay. So you're a, you're a, I'm just trying to do some quick oh, calculations. You were a young man. I was a young man. Um, I had no idea, no clue what was happening. Um, and look, uh, you, you grow up protected, uh, again, by the patriarch. He, he covers so many things. I mean, things that you don't think about. I mean, I never thought about buying electricity, Kumusha. Mm. You know what I mean? Now, all of a sudden, that's a responsibility that we have. You know what I mean? And as I said, I've got a lot of people to thank because the brunt of the things were actually dealt with by my brother and my mother. Um, those are the two big people in my life, um, and they've been very, very strong. Look, I've, I've got my fair share of my participation, but I do owe a lot to, to them. Your, your brother and your mom. And are you yeah. quite tight? Are you quite tight with with the with with, with the cleaning? And yeah, your no, no, no. My mom, my mom's like my wife now. You know, really, I talk eh? to her like every. <laughs> Every day we talk about this, talk about that. And, and does she know, know you? And does she know your ins and outs about everything? I'm not like that. I mean, I mean, but but when you say it, look, I mean, as a, as a boy child, there are certain things that you do hide from your parents yeah. naturally. Uh, they don't know that she's as crazy as you are, but uh, she's probably going to watch this <laughs> and and laugh. But uh, I mean, we're very close. We've got a good relationship. I've got a lot of respect for my brother as well. Uh, naturally, as men, you clash. You know, as siblings, as men, you really, really. Clash. I mean, it's two bulls coming together and and having contradicting views almost all the time. Yeah. So I mean, with all set up now, we've just managed to manage each other. Um, you also have to realize, by t- tradition and by custom, you just have to respect your older brother. The older brother. That's just facts. There's no way to actually. Yeah. There's actually no way to go around. There's actually no way to go around it. So just back to the main story, which was 2013. Old man passes away. I remember the day he passed away. Um, I woke up the next day because I was living with him at the time, and I went into his room. Um, like any other day, because I used to go every single morning, have a chat with them about business, yada, yada, argue about business, yada, yada, and go, go to work and you'll stay at home. And I remember the one day, the day after he passed, I did the exact same thing. And I couldn't believe he wasn't there. Like, it was, what? It, that's when reality set in that he's gone. And I mean, that hit me hard. I remember it was quite tough to deal with, but were you, again... Were you close to the old man uh, yeah, no, at no, the no, time? No, that's, I, I mean, I, I will speak about my old man until tomorrow. That guy, in my view was an absolute legend. Amen. An absolute, Amen. absolute legend. And I mean, uh, those who knew him, or those who are going to watch this and know him, they know that he was just unbelievable. I mean, the amount of experiences I've had, I mean, as, as a youngster until now, uh, I man, I can't even explain. Like, I've done everything under mm. the sun. You call it deep sea fishing, hunting, golfing, whatever you, whatever you can name, I've done it. So, mm. Well, you're probably quite a, like a white black guy. Did, did, he, did, he, did, he, did he enjoy it? I don't want to say that. No, I, I, say that. that. Yeah, I don't want to separate between white and black. I want to call us Zimbabweans. Okay. He was a different Zimbabwean. That's, that's Let me fair. put it that way. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. But when yeah. I said to I wanted to use the word twi, but then, yeah. but then, but then I was like, yeah. Ish, da, 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 da. yeah, no, no, it is a bit controversial. But I mean, all I can say is we learned a lot from my old man. And it's, it's kind of what makes me who I am today. It makes who my brother is today. It even makes who my mom is today. Yeah, Everyone's course. got absolute respect for him. He had his flaws, man. Of course, your mom hides certain things about your dad from you kids and yada, yada. I mean, every man has his flaws. But I mean, in general, he was a top tier guy. Yeah. And we, we had a very, very strong relationship. So when he passed away in 2013, I remember we were $4 million in debt. Um, and yay, the debtors came knocking, hey? They really tried to take everything and, and they did they did take quite a significant portion of a lot of th- different things um we had all sorts of debts left right and center and i mean you know when the old man's alive these are handshake agreements that he has with many different people so they don't come after him because they know he's alive yeah. but now when you the wife and the kids are left it's not crisis mode for them but why do you think people come knocking after he's gone what's what what are they expecting if if if, if you know if he's not there anymore where, where do they think the money is going to come from uh, you know? uh no but but let's be honest you believe in the in, in the person not necessarily the brand but you believe more in the person yeah. so they had so much faith in uh, jm i call him jm john makoa they had so much faith in jm and then all of this comes crumbling down i mean he's not there anymore and then they come after you because they don't think that you can achieve the things that he achieved. And, and it's true. I mean, to some extent, we're still trying to fill his boots till, till this day. 
and I mean, he did a lot of great things. As I said, I can go on and on, uh, but it would be fair for our viewers. I think everyone thinks their dad is their own hero. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I just feel very differently about my dad. I think he's my superhero. Um, so I had a very good relationship with him. Uh, of course, we had our little spats, kids, dad, egos, this and this. I know this, you know that. I can do this better than you. It happens. You know, um, it's funny. I've got two daughters now. So I spoke to my uncle and I said, uncle, I've got two daughters now. And he says, congrats. He says, well done. I said, why? But you got a son and you've got some daughters. He says, yo, my son is now 21 and he thinks he can challenge me. You know, he thinks he's a better man than I am. And it's true. When you're a son, you actually think you know more than your father mm. at some point in time. Mm. And you end up challenging that person. So I, I understood where he was coming from because he was coming from a place of, of being a bit disgruntled by it. But anyway, back how to old the, How old are your daughters <laughs> nowadays? Um, so my first daughter is five. Okay. Um, she's in the UK. She's coming out of this month. And then my second one is <laughs> nearly four months now. Uh, congratulations. So she, she's a toddler. Thank you. Beautiful little toddler. Funny. And yeah, just such a, such a gem. Such a blessing to the family. So I'm really grateful for those two people. Um, sorry, I keep uh, digressing. But back to the main story, which was 2013. Dad passes away. And my mom comes to us and says, guys... Your life's about to change. Be ready. And we don't know what she meant at the time. And I mean, your lifestyle completely adjusts, man. You know, you're used to getting pocket money. You're used to getting a nice car. You know, everything changes. Now you're sharing a car with your mom. You're, you're living, um, you're renting out somewhere else. You know, the big house that you used to stay in had to go now. Fortunately, we didn't have to sell. It's been leased out. But, you know, your life changes in general. Just everything changes. And you kind of see things for what they are. You know, um, all, all of a sudden things are like shaky. And I remember, man, uh, as I said, you know, you're just facing all these troubles. This is 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017 is when I decided to go to England uh, to do my master's. And my mom says, look, I don't have money for, for, for your school. Um, but you know what? I'll pay your, sorry. She said, I'll pay your school fees and your rental. Anything else is yours. You know, it's, it's your cock job. Deal with it. And I said, wow, okay. You know, life is Which is really still quite real. a nice position to be in to have your rental and school fees uh, paid. But, but, but I guess coming, but I guess coming, coming from, from the life right? that you had where you were never uh, wanting it's the is, is, the, is, is the change, yeah. right? Yeah, so as, as I said, like, you're used to the patriarch taking care of everything, correct. including your pocket money, including, including everything. everything. So, I mean, it is a bit of a shocker now when you have to work. And I mean, I went to England and I worked. This is a true story. And I worked for Parcel Force. If anyone in the UK knows what Parcel Force is, it's one of the worst jobs you can work. Um, it's basically a delivery center in the middle of London, in the middle of England, in a place called Baggington. And you distribute anything that's bought online, goes through that uh, place in Baggington. Like an Amazon warehouse. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's exactly. Like, it's like Amazon. So literally, I mean, I was lifting 22 kg wall heaters. I mean, to small boxes of phones, to shoes, to... I mean, you've got such a wide variety. And I, I remember at the time, you're packing seven, eight trucks, 30-ton trucks a day, you know, full of That's goods. Wild. And yeah, no, no, it was, it was, it was a tough it was time. Tough it, was, it, was, it, was, it was tough labor. And I was working for seven pounds an hour. I'll never forget that. My feet, my feet, I had to wear like four pairs of socks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just to stay comfortable. So... I, 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 was I this the first time you ever had to do like proper like manual like like no like no I mean I was, like, I was no. working 2013 to 2017 I was working in Zim I was a marketing exec at the at the fuel company and I mean I was I can't say I was earning peanuts but uh, I wasn't earning the lifestyle changed that changed I mean I just had to adapt things were not the same anymore uh, you know I had to work you know I, I know I had to make sales I had to prove why I had to be there there was no more nepotism you have to prove why you want to be there mm. and you have to make the sales so I had to make the sales. I had to push the brand. I had to do all sorts of things. That's why I'm so passionate about my, my work because I believe that uh, it's something that I've come from the ground up with. Yeah. And I mean, as I said, by the time my old man passed, everything was in disarray. The fuel company was down. Um, we were in debt to the NMB. We had all sorts of things going on at the same time. Uh, and then again, fast forward 2017, I go to England. I decide to do a master, um, master of Science in Oil and Gas Management. That was pretty cool. Um, up until January 12th, 20, 2017, 2017, 2018, 12th of January, 2018, I managed to get a girl pregnant and I'm in school. So, you know, you know, how it is in our culture, you know, you've gone to school, you've gone to do something mm -hmm. and you go and do the other thing. <laughs> and now, and now you're wearing, and now, wearing, and now, and now, now I went five months without telling my mom this, that this has happened. I was scared. I was terrified. 
and I, I just knew, you know, you start thinking, is oh it, my God. Is, is, is it a Zimbro that you got pregnant? Yeah, no, but, but in the UK. But in the UK. And, and I mean, you start thinking about, wow, man, I'm in so much trouble. Or, you know, I'm such a waste of life. I've been given this opportunity and then I go and mess it up. What's wrong with me? You know, all sorts of things. And I can tell you now that that child has been my biggest blessing wow. by far. Now. Why? Man, she changed everything, man. From the day I held her, I said, Diz, no one can tell this girl anything. You need to make sure that no one tells us. If it's a trip to Paris, you must have taken her there. If it's to Dubai, Legoland, she's been there. You know what I mean? She's been all over the world traveling. She's had a, a good life already. And I want to maintain that for my child because I don't want any other man to be able to give her that or for her to be surprised or shocked by those things. And you know that's, I mean? uh, that's massive though. Yeah, because, no, no, no. Because, that's, because she's my, if you're the first mover for you in, in, in anything, and I think I don't have a child yet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that I need. You need one. Yeah. You need one. It changes your whole perspective on a lot of things. But you say you need one, Des. It's like, I freaking, I'm still young, you know, and I'm like, why, why, um, why, why rush into it? Yes, I would like to be a young, a young dad one day. And yes, I would, well, even today. But I'm like, I'm not just going to have a light tea for the sake of having a light no, tea. No, of course, of course. Do it with structure. I mean, I, I think I can honestly ad, um, admit on this platform that one of my biggest regrets is actually not being able to be with the mom. You know what I mean? And that's not for the mom. That's more for the child. Are you still tight to um, the moms? No, I mean, we, we talk, we've had our fair share of disagreements um, throughout the years. Uh, but I mean, look, we talk. We've got good rapport. As I said, she's coming in of this month. So I'm able to um, have some so sort of rapport with her. Um, but again, the person who suffers at the end of the day is the child because we've made our own selfish decisions to do what we did and not raise the child together. So it was a regret. But at the same time, I'm also grateful to my current wife, of course. Um, you know, she, she's amazing. She's doing well with the baby right now. She's doing her own thing. thing. And I mean, she's, she's phenomenal. I, I have to say that. And so, so does, um, your, does your lighty come now from the UK to yeah, come no, visit? No, so and, so and, she, has to come, she has to come from the UK. She was here in January. Yeah, she's in January and she's back again for summer break um, in July. So she's here for like a month when she comes. Yeah, um, tell yeah. me to digress a bit from family, yeah? Mm. Tell me, so, the, so now, you know, you, your, your family's been in the fuel industry for a long time. Yeah. You, you started off pet, it's Petromok so, Exo. So, so look at it as two words. There's Petromok, which is from Mozambique, no. and there's Exo Petroleum, which is our family business. Again. So the two together, it's a joint venture between Petromok and Exo. Okay. So it's called Petromok Exo. It's I very hard it. to pronounce if you don't Petromok separate the two. Exo. So it's two words, Petromok and Exo. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so now that's, so that, that's, that's just, these are the service stations we see in the Raja yeah. right now. These are the service stations you see around the country. Uh, we're sitting on 22 at the moment. 22 sites. Um, but I'm only running 13. Um, the rest we've um, just given some dealers. You know, we, we take strategies according to the location. Um, you know, sometimes it's strategic for us to run it. Sometimes we lease it out. It just depends on the actual location. But uh, yeah, we're running about 13 now. And uh, we, we uh, look, uh, I think one thing my old man did when he ran the business um, is he grew too fast, too quick. So the history and the foundation of Exo Petroleum is that he saw a gap in the market. Everyone else was in the big cities. You're talking about the five big sisters, Total, uh, Shaw, Mobile, BP, and Caltex. These were the big shots. They were dominating the industry. And he came in and said, no, 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 but I'm indigenous. You know, we also need a, a piece of the cake. Let me set up where everyone else isn't. So if you look at some of our locations, I mean, they're all over the country. You're talking about uh, Jerera, Gutu, Muzarabani, um, uh, Chitungwiza. Um, <laughs> I always go blank. Yeah. Wingate, um, Sunningdale, um, Kamfisa. So, I, I, so, I mean, so, yeah, so, just to so, name so, a few. So would you say he was quite the... Quite a visionary in terms of seeing, uh, if, you know, if all these guys are in all these uh, in the big places, you know, I want to, I want to try and go where there's less of a footprint but still yeah. foot traffic. Yeah, say. no, no, no. Of course, I mean, as I said, he saw his niche and he ran with it basically. So he ran with his market, knowing that this is this is a big market for the indigenous people. Yeah, and I mean, that's what it was. It's the first black indigenous fuel company in the country. Is it really? Uh, yes, yes, yes. It's the first black indigenous fuel company. And he just, as I said, wanted to cater for the people. You know what I mean? So that's that's exactly what he did. And I mean, he got a lot of support on the way, along the way from the banks, uh, you know, from the government, whatever the case was. Uh, he managed to convince them, you know, to uh, provide subsidies on fuel because he was giving out farmers on credits and uh, all sorts of things. I mean, I was still very young to understand the model. But I mean, I do look at the records uh, now and I mean, I'm looking at 20 year records and I'm seeing the blueprint. I, I, I could see his vision. And I mean, he managed to, to do it um, uh, as well as he did. 
And uh, and as a company climbed from strength to strength since 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 your old boy passed away, and uh-huh. um, and to where to where you brought it or haven't brought it, what 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 what's the trajectory of the company been since since um since since then? Yeah, again, of course, I'm 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 just trying not to toot my own horn, but it really has. It's been a, a crazy turn. Are you around. the one that runs with it, or you and your brother, or who, uh, so who runs? I consult. I consult. Okay. I have to be very fair because when it comes to big decisions, I consult. I always make sure I consult. So I'm going to make a. I'm going to suggest, put my motion forward, and I'll wait for feedback. And look, sometimes the feedback is positive, sometimes it's no, negative. But yeah, no, I, mm. the question is, do yeah. you, so who's, who's the one that's running with it now, it's, even it's, though you've got consultants? No, no, it's me. It's me, okay. 100%. Okay, I'm so the general you, manager right now. Okay. Um, I'm not a board member. My mom and my uh, brother are board members, but I am the general manager, so I technically report to them. Okay. But they let me take care of the day-to-day, you know, the small stuff. I, I can't sell a service station without their approval. I can't buy one without their approval, okay. for example. Yeah. But the day-to-day about distribution and attendance, this... That you know the day to day runnings, that's all me. So, okay. so yes, it has grown from strength to strength. Uh we are in a much, much better position uh than we were in let's say twenty nineteen. Uh we've been expanding as well. Um and slowly, you know, as I said, it takes time. We're not in a rush to expand too big. Yeah. Um because we saw, I mean, my my, my old man would use tankers of fuel. You know, through trusting too many people to do things. Yes. And he, him not having his eye on the ball. So if you see me with my little buddy here, my diary. I literally diarize every single thing, including the notes of this podcast. I actually diarize everything. I have to make sure I've got a diary next to me. If anyone uh, knows me, uh, has been with me, 9 p.m. almost every day, actually every day, except for Saturdays, I'm with my diary. I'm making notes for the next day. Really? Yeah. It's very important. Yeah. I am. Um, I am. Um, I like that. And it, and it, it, sh- one, it shows character. Yeah. And even and even the slogan of we are service stations is excellence everywhere. Yeah, right, hundred percent. And um and it's and it's and and you can see it in your service stations is when you is when you get there it's clean it's it's you know you know you know the sites are well looked after the attendees always shirts tucked in well like 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 well dressed it is it is excellence everywhere and and things like that don't don't happen without diarying or journalizing or, yeah. or, or, or casting well, your well, vision I mean, for look, the- you do get feedback. I encourage customer feedback and I do get a lot of complaints. So I'll be very honest. And I, I've always told my attendants, have a sense of pride in what you do. Yeah. You know what I mean? You must be proud that you work for this company. They pay you on time and you're doing things at your best, at the best of your ability. You know, you can't have customers coming to complain that this guy did this, he treated me like this, he said this and that, all sorts of things. Um, so look, I'm not, I'm not your big totals, I'm not your big um, well, uh, energy park, I was on the phone with them earlier one, um, uh, Shane. Uh, I'm not your big, big guys, but I believe that if I do the small things right, it will make me bigger eventually. And that's what I focus on. So right now I'm in the process of actually um, focusing on what I call my backwards. So you know how you have your full court, you have your pump, you have your service station, but we also have big pieces of land behind the service stations. And now I'm focusing on developing those to generate more income. Yeah. Not to run them, I just want to be a landlord, but I've got so many places there um, that I've managed to change, that I've managed to refurb, I've managed to restructure, just so that we earn extra money from the back courts. So it's not about the fuel anymore, alone. You know, now I'm earning money because I've got a tenant in Blue Air who runs a kiosk and he's paying me 500 bucks a month. Um, then I've got someone somewhere else in Chivu who's doing gas. You've got whatever. a lot of land around the country as a family. As you've got a quite a big um, estate. We, we, lost, say? we lost quite a substantial amount of land. Um, as I said, through the NMB debt that I spoke about, uh, we had to really let go of some very tough assets. But I, I think one thing my old man did right. That's why I've got so much praise for him. Is he didn't go wild and buy the Lamborghinis and the Ferraris and the whatever. I mean, he thought about legacy. I'll tell you a very very crazy story about legacy um in 20 2020 i think we went on holiday um with my sister's kids i've got my niece and my nephew and they're young man i mean my niece at the time was like four um and my nephew was about six and we're all the way in inyasoro and i remember mozambique and mozambique and when inyasoro and mozambique and you know we've gone down to the beach we've gone down the stairs to the beach and the kids are playing and i don't know what hit me it was just a complete moment in itself. And I said, wow. I said, this man built this um, house, because he's got a lodge in, in Mozambique. He built this house slash lodge in, in the year 2000. 18, 19 years later, his grandkids are playing on the beach in Mozambique. Mm-hmm. And, and I, said, I said, how many people can tell their story? 
I said that man was a visionary. I said, "Wow, that is unbelievable." Yeah, it, it, it hit me like first, first, first of all, you just don't have too many black men <laughs> buying, buying, <laughs> buying homes in Nigeria, so big, uh-huh. you know. And I'll, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, when we did start construction on that project, he took us there. I remember the town of Inyasura used to run on a generator. The entire town, no joke. Uh, you can ask anyone about this. Ask the reeds at uh, um, Poc- Poconut. They're on, they're on the other side. We're on the South African side. They're on the Zim side. And I mean, it, the whole town used to run on a generator. He takes us there and we get caught in Cyclone Aline. Can you believe that? We flew into Velanculos. The runway, I mean, we flew and we did our business on our way out wanting to leave. The runway is about this deep yeah. in water. You know, you can't take off, you can't leave. There's coconuts flying past your head. There's service station canopies flying past your head. Oh. It, it, was, was, it was absolutely mad. And I can tell you that till today, I never saw um, him panic. I never saw a face of panic. I never saw um, a face of, oh my God, we're in trouble. Yeah. He was cool as a cucumber and I felt comfortable. I felt safe. Even though coconuts were flying, 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 flying my head. Shit. You know what I mean? So uh, this is just testament to the man he was and to the man I'm trying I to mean, become. You know, you know uh, in any situation, cool under pressure, we've been lost out at sea, man. We're trying to go to 12 Mile Reef from Inyasuro. The boat turns around. He, he says, yeah, home is there. Man, we went, we went, we went, nothing. Said, said dad, we're lost. Let's follow the sun. You, you know, know that, that kind of, of thing. Yeah. So, so he was very adventurous. Um, and we, in return, are you quite adventurous? Do you do you enjoy the outdoors? Do you, no, do you no, enjoy, I do. I do. Do you enjoy fishing? You enjoy hunting? I do, I do. And you enjoy that sort of thing? I, I do, man. We've got annual trips to Kariba where you go fishing. Um, we do try hunt once in a while on the farm in Mashingo. Um, all sorts of things, man. We, we were really quite fun, but not as fun as he was. He was just a bit of a madman. Really? Eh? Yeah, I know. He was proper adventurous. And I wonder who taught him. Because, I mean, he grew up in Mashingo. I mean, you grew up. Um, with that's what just something that's Jecha. actually just inside. Yeah, no, it's that's just, just inside. That's it's just, just, it's, I, I mean, my old man died at, at 53. Wow, he's young. He was very young. You know what I mean? And I mean, sorry, 63. <laughs> sorry. <Yeah. laughs> no, it's 53. Yeah. I'll do my maths. But he died very young. It's 53. He died very young, but he lived a full life. And that's exactly what I'm trying to achieve and trying to do myself. And I know it's the same for my brother. It's the same for my sister because we were just engrossed in this culture and understanding of um, just enjoying life. You know, work hard, do whatever, but just don't forget to take care of what matters the most, yeah, which is yourself and your family. And the end, he really did that. And I mean, look, till today, as I said, we're only here today because of it. And I, I, will, I, I will go on and on. I'll go on and on about my old man. Um, but then again, comes back to post old man. No, this is when Des comes in. Des finishes his uh, degree in the UK. Um, I come back and I've now got a new baby. Um, and yeah, man, struggle again. You know, Zim is tough. 2018, end of 2018, beginning of 2019. Zim is tough. And I said to myself, you know what? Let me just make a plan. Let me make a plan. I think at the time we were running about three service stations. And I said, you know what? Uh, most of the sites were leased out. And I said, you know what? We have to take these back, man. We can't be letting people run our sites took them back upset a lot of people who were my tenants at the time um i uh, had to get them out sorry guys we're on our sites back sorry sorry let's take them back started running our own sites you know all of a sudden from three we went to six six we went to nine nine we went to 12 and now i'm on 13 uh, out of 22 the rest i've said you know what let me not grow too big too quick as yeah. i said yeah you know it's it's a it's a it's a calculated growth there's no rush to grow that quick uh, because you have to get your basics right. So until I maximize and sweat every single asset that I'm uh, operating now, I'm not going to go to the next one. So I have to sweat every single asset. When I know I've sweated it, I've filled my back court up with tenants. I'm running my full courts properly and properly efficiently. You know what I mean? I've got good pricing on my pumps. Then I can move on to the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one. That kind of thing. Where where do you see yourself, days in, in 10 years? Where, where, where am, would you have to be? Um, in t- on a in a in a in a business on a business standpoint, you know, in terms of your service stations, but also but also just where would you like to be as days now as a as a as a as a family man and 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 as as days. So I'll speak about the business side. Business is going to be business. Um, it just has to be taken care of, and you have to grow according to what suits you. As I said, if I grow too big too quick, everything might come. But down. what growth would you like to see? So where would you like um, to be? I'm actually looking at more as, as a family strategy. I'll tell you, our strategy is actually to be property owners 
and more landlords than actual traders. The reason being, throughout the year, is trying to do so many different things. I mean, I've had a lot of um, failures and, and, and a lot of business ventures that I've done. And it's always got to do with te technicalities on legislation, technicalities on this, on that. Uh, I don't want to go too much into that. But the trading environment sometimes is not favorable in this country. I would um, actually look at, um, as I said, being more of a property owner and just being a landlord. So that's how we're setting up our structures now. We're looking at more being property. So if you ask me, Des, would you rather run 30 service stations, which is a bloody headache, or, or actually just manage 50, 60 properties and just be a landlord, I'll go for the landlord option. So that's where I want to be. And I think that's what I've started to do now. I'm now into construction and property development. So we're, we're slowly, we're getting there. As I said, it's a process. I've learned to understand the process. I've learned to understand that these things take time. I've learned to understand to be patient and to be very calculative and to be organized. That's why I look back at this diary and I say, Diz, this thing will do so many wonders mm, for you. Yeah. You know, $10 in, in pen and paper will do so much for you. Just write everything down. Good advice that. It's you know, advice. honestly, honestly. You know, I've never been one to to write things down or to, or to you know, I, like, I, like I don't journal, I don't do, use a diary or, you know, if, if it's really important, I'll put it as notes in my phone or whatever. Yeah, well, fair enough. Are you, are you, do you feel like you're organized? I am um, maximum capacity. No, I, I definitely could yeah. be a lot more organized. Yeah, you and, know? and it starts with that. Ten starts with this. <laughs> and, it, and where it, where I did once start journaling is the Saber. Do you know Saber yes. Business World? Yeah. Yes, yes, and, yes. And, yes. And, and they do a course. You know, ignite your success, ignite your business, thousand day CEO. Okay. And and a big thing for them is 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 is, is diarizing everything. You know, hundred percent. Right, write your five your your five goals down for 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 each day. So you get your small goals and your bigger goals. Yeah. And then and then you know so at the eat at the start of every month you like write down your goals for the month and then at the start of the day you like write down five 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 things you want to achieve that day then the night before you say what you want to do tomorrow then you put it all down and when you and you know when I didn't start doing that I, I didn't really do it diligently but when I did start doing that I did see a change in and in, in, you know in my life but exactly but um but I don't know I guess it's it's probably just a lack of discipline or just or just even. Not discipline, but also I guess it's discipline because I'm not making the time. I was I was going to say I'm, I'm I don't have the time to 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 uh, journal, but it's just lack of discipline for not yeah, finding I mean, the time. I mean, dedicate know? dedicate ten fifteen minutes a day. Tell yourself what you want to do the next day, what you have to get done. I mean, I operate between my diary and my phone. Yeah. So same thing, um, and it's crazy because I text myself. I've got I've got two phones, so I'll go on my Econet number and I'll send a message to my network number. And literally, whilst I'm driving, I'm typing, you know, you have to do this, you have to do that, Must you have to do that. that day. Yeah, you know, don't, no, sorry. Don't, <laughs> that's off the record. Don't, don't, that's <laughs> off the record. But, uh, I mean, look, as I said, just so I remember, I actually consciously always remind myself to do certain things. Yeah. And so I don't forget because what I've learned in this life is efficiency is very important. You know, you can be good at what you do, but if you're not efficient, yeah. you're not doing anything. And be efficient with your time. Your time is everything. So by the time you get to rest and to, to, to um, wind down, it's because you've actually done everything that you've listed and you've completed and achieved it. You know, in a situation where you're sitting at 9 p.m. at night and you're like, oh my God, I should have done that at 4 p.m. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. So you just have to be more organized. When you, um, when you look at young, young Zimbabweans, okay? Sorry, sorry, sorry. There's a second question you asked me before you get into that, yeah. which is the family. The family in 10, um, 10 years. In 10, years. Uh, 10 years time, I want to see my daughters grow, probably have one more child. And I mean, uh, as I said, the feeling to have well, this euphoria around kids is just phenomenal. Um, it makes you wake up and want to achieve more. You know, you want to make sure you leave a legacy. And that's why I spoke to you about the Mozambique legacy. And uh, I, as I said, with my old man, man, I, I could talk for the whole day about legacy alone. And which is what I encourage myself to do and my peers to do. You're not doing these things for yourself. You're planting a tree so someone can enjoy the shade tomorrow. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's just my main focus. So how are your daughters going to remember you? Um, I want them to remember me as a fun loving dad, which is ultimately what I remember my old man as. The money was there, the whatever. Uh, I mean, as I said, we're spoiled. I can't come here and say we struggled. So I remember the good times. But what is more important was the actual interaction I had with them. You know what I mean? Yeah. We had such a strong reaction, that, uh, interaction. And I remember, I mean, I, I speak to a lot of people I consult. And I remember there's this old man um, who's got all this money in the world and he's got no family. And it's sad because you, you see it and you're like, okay, what are you going to leave? Who are you going to leave all of this to? You know what I mean? You've, you've focused or you've um, prioritized your entire life to making money. 
And then now at the end of the day, you're sitting by a fire. Well, are you going to burn your money in the fire? What are you, you going to do? You're sitting by yourself. You're by sitting your by yourself. yourself. You know what I mean? So it's, it's actually very sad that if you spend your entire life chasing money and not worrying about the things that matter, it will come back to you eventually. So you really have to take care of what matters. Mm. 100%. Amen. I love that. Yeah. 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 So with, with, with the... With the young people of Zimbabwe, yeah, right. So young, so young, so young Zimbabweans, because you're also a young Zimbabwean who's 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 made a success of, of of himself from what was left behind, but has grown it to 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 bigger things. But what are some of the stumbling blocks you see? Um, you see when people are one trying to make a success of themselves in Zimbabwe. Um, what uh, you know is their vision warped? Is they are they on the wrong trajectory? But but um, but what 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 I've noticed in Zim is a lot of people. <coughs> have become traders or uh, you know, and trade in and trade anything and everything you know um and it's um it, you, you you could argue that it's an easy route out and saying you know i can i can hustle and bustle there but but to actually start something and build something from the ground up and in, in order for it to to um to to succeed there's not a lot of that anymore you know but I, you know, I, w- I want I want to hear from so, from so you I'll, what you I'll, think. I'll answer this question in multiple ways the first one is uh what my friend uh, Tendai Mashamanda um, told me, uh, the Mashwede boys, he says to me, Des, it's not about the money, it's about your structure, right? Forget about money. What can you structure? What's your value addition at the end of the day? Can you bring point, uh, person number one to person number two and you add value through the relationship and you earn money from that? Are you able to do that? And I said, 100%, yes, I can. So he's one of the first people who actually told me that it's all about structure. A lot of people focus on the capital. Oh, I, li- I like capital to do this. I like capital to do that. But what is your value addition? Is it a skill? Uh, is it your interaction with people? Is it your relationship? What is it that you bring to the table that can help you make money initially? Yes. You know what I mean? And then um, to elaborate on that point, um, I-, I spoke to another, I consult. I told you I consult extensively. I was on the phone with my brother um, called Dan. Uh, Dan is from Blue Ayo. He's a-, a good mate of mine. And I said, I said, Dan, you know, I'm doing this podcast uh, what's your take? And he says the main problem we have with a lot of Zimbabweans is in the networking, right? Why should you seek to benefit something every time you want to network people together? If I want to uh, link you up with someone else, why do I have to have a benefit in the transaction? What's wrong with me just sharing your contact and saying, you know what, Perry, talk to this guy, you guys, whatever you structure, I'm happy for you. Yeah, yeah. Some, Some people, people don't, don't do, do that, that anymore. It's all about, ah, okay. And he gave me this example. He says, look, I once called a mate uh, for a grader in Masasa. So he says, he calls his mates and says, I'm looking for a grader in Masasa. He says, fine, I'll call you back. Let me call the guy. He calls the guy and says, yeah, uh, tell him the grader is 120 an hour. Right? You know, that kind of thing. But the grade is actually 90 bucks an hour. Yeah. So this guy's put 30 bucks on top for what? What is your value addition for putting $30 on top? And I think that was the standard across the board with Zimbabweans, especially young Zimbabweans. So true. Uh, then so you look true. at it in a different way. Then you say, okay, um, that's happened. Um, and then you say, sorry, I'm forgetting my point, but it was very important. Um, okay, I'll, go, I'll get back to the first one, then I'll remember. But basically, it's the networking issue where you want to gain without actually, you want to reap where you didn't sow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, yes, sorry. The second one was laziness. A lot of Zimbabweans, I can't believe this because every time I think about it, I think of my old man. My old man was resourceful. You would make a plan to get information. You would walk door to door. You would find out what he needed to find out the, the old school way. There were no phones at the time. There was nothing. This generation has information at their fingertips. You've got Google at your fingertips. And you want to pick up the phone and call Diz. And listen to the calls I get. Uh, Diz, uh, I've got someone 500 million liters at Masasa. I say, my man, half a billion liters and you've got no markets to sell to. I say, come on, bro. Surely. You know, even the storage. I mean, simple research will tell you that our storage facilities for the entire country are half a billion liters. So how can you tell me that one person's bought 100, uh, 500 million liters? It's crazy. The one that was also we're just too gullible. How, how, how can you believe when someone calls and says, oh, no, but it's, the, it's the laziness. It's the laziness to then follow up on someone's information. So you, I get calls like that. I get calls, uh, Des, what's the duty today? This is publicly gazetted information. You know what I mean? I, I checked the stats. I, I checked the stats for April 2023. Zimbabwe as a nation imported 100 million liters of diesel and about 60 million liters of petrol. These are facts. And these are things that are uh, public. They're, this is public you know, information. You can go and look it up and you'll find and it. It'll take you two minutes. And I mean, what's wrong with this generation is almost everyone's got access to internet. So you've got access to information. So whatever you want to research, the world is really your oyster. 
you can research marine biology if you want. You yeah. can research this, you can research that. It doesn't matter. But there's so much information that we have access to, but we choose not to because we're just a lazy generation. And we just want to find someone else to blame. So honestly, when I get calls like that, people then say, ah, oh, but this is arrogant. You know, he doesn't want to talk. And I, and I really don't want to talk about it because you've not even tried to do your research. And I mean, look, uh, I've got my, my mentors or people that I approach. Um, you know, I can talk about so many people. Um, you know, Mr. Mr. Mataranika, I can talk about Tobias Musariri. I can talk about um, uh, Sydney uh, Mutsambiwa. I can talk about um, uh, Moses Chinguena, right? I do not go to those people with half information. I do my research. I make sure that I know what I'm talking about first, and then I approach them. And I'm not expecting the same from people because I'm, I'm a nobody as far as I'm concerned. But at least come with some research, come with some information, and I don't mind guiding you the rest of the way. Yeah. But if you come with absolutely no information and you're trying to ask me for this, what's your diesel price today? Okay, uh, this is $1.40. You go to a client and you say $1.45. Do you know what the client does? He comes back to me and says, this is too expensive because he's misquoted me. He's put a crazy markup on yeah. my products and he's misquoted and he says, yeah, Petro Giggs was charging $1.45 and that's not correct. I've charged you dollar forty. I expect you to put one cent on it. Don't don't go and try and make, put five cents and exactly exactly make so, it a quick. So part. then that tarnishes my image. So I mean, these are the problems and the frustrations that we have as a, as a country, as a nation. Uh, uh, but how long do we just, go about to fix this, or how, how do we go about to help each other to be to be able to get out of these habits of laziness and to and to and to you know act you know to actually have a crack at it? You know what what so, what what can Des do? What can Terry do? What what can we do to, to help the people, ourselves and the people around us? Uh, it's a disease called pocket watching. I call it pocket watching. And that's where it all starts. It starts in the fact that Perry is doing his podcast, he's making money. Let me start doing a podcast as well. You know what I mean? All of a sudden you think I can meet your level of skill when it comes to doing a podcast. It's yeah. crazy. Because I'm watching your pocket, I'm seeing you make money, and I think I can do the same. Perry's not making money for the podcast. <laughs> just say, just say just there. So pocket watching is a real problem that we have in this country. People want to say, "Oh, but that guy's driving a, 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 you know, the new Range Rover. How did he do it? Let me, let me copy and paste." You can't because he's got a certain skill set. You know what I mean? He's got a certain way of doing things. I know that people can't do what I do, and I'm being very honest because I've put in the work. I've been working, Perry. I forgot to tell you, I've been working at a fuel station since I was 12 years old. Mm. You know what I mean? I even go to my fuel attendants and I tell them, guys, you can't tell me anything. I've been working this thing. You can't tell me that the pump has done this, the temperature. The I say, please keep quiet. <coughs> Don't tell me anything. I've uh, worked. Because you know I've actually trade. done it. You I've actually done it. Trade, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I mean, I get all sorts of things. And then you, you get into another aspect. Uh, I finish with the pocket watching, which is just people wondering or, or questioning too much about someone else, what, what they do, basically. And then you look at another angle, which is a very big problem um, in our business community. Seniority in the business place is a big problem. I mean, look, you're older than me. I respect that. It doesn't mean you know everything. Sometimes you mess up. But the fact that someone actually gets offended when you confront them for messing up, just because they're older, they feel entitled that you can't tell them that you can't, can't do you this. Know what I mean? this. You, you've messed up. You've really messed up and you need to fix this. And someone actually gets offended. And this is maybe an employee. You know, that kind of thing. So seniority in the workplace, pocket watching, uh, the lack of networking, all those things are what people really need to address. So, I mean, I speak about it on this platform because I want people to learn from this. Yes. Because I can see how um, destructive it is. You know what I mean? As I said, you end up tarnishing my image by misquoting a by price misquoting. to a customer. Or, or you end up wanting to put such a crazy mock-up on a simple interaction. And for me personally, I, I encourage people to network as much as possible. It's not always going to be about you. But some people are not good networkers. Some people are not are not are not. Some people are not skilled and or even have that in them to be able to go and meet new people or to, and as you know, some people like yourself and myself might be right. Mm -hmm. And then we put that expectation on someone else to say because I've made a success through networking, maybe someone's good at learning a skill. And saying, you know, if, if I hone in this skill and I can code and I'm the best coder, I need not need, I, I don't need to network because someone will come to me for my service. No, 100%. 100%. Uh, I mean, well, when I speak about networking, I'm talking about sharing information. Yeah. It's just a matter of sharing information. If you know someone, I mean, if you call me, 
99% of the time, I'll know someone who does something. If you want some help in Bluwayo, I've got someone. If you yeah. want some help in Gweru, in Kaduma, in whatever. Because I'm fine, I've managed to establish my own network. But uh, what's wrong with me referring my network onto you? And not taking a five-state cut. And, and having zero interest Amen. in what you do. Yeah. The, worst, the most I'll ask you for is buy me a bottle of Jameson if your deal goes through. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That kind of thing. So, uh, yes, I understand where you're coming from with the, with the networking aspect, but... You need to understand that everyone has their own certain level of skill and their own certain... I, I think for me personally, being here at this interview, I'm not here because of my net worth. Mm. I'm here because of my network. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know you personally. And we haven't established a relationship over a long time. Yeah. But I managed to network with you and I guess that's my skill set. Correct. So uh, you're right. If you're a coder, specialize with that. But make sure you follow through with it. And that's another thing that we have in this generation. People don't follow through. I, I mean, um, I, I work with people, um, the people I was making a payment to just now. I, I've known those people for about nine years, right? Come, hey, thunder, uh, <laughs> hail, sorry, mm -hmm. thunder, lightning, whatever. These are people that I can trust with my life and they can do the same with me because we've done transactions where it's, it's, it's actually almost terrifying that they trust me with whether it's X amount of money or whatever, it doesn't matter. But all I'm saying is we've built that report together over yeah. a prolonged period. So, I mean, use your skill set to your best benefit. Um, and I mean, for me personally, again, uh, I'll talk about myself, sorry. Um, I believe that I want to reach a situation where I'm the most educated, most trained, most experienced person in my industry. And I'm, I'm going to back it up by facts. I mean, I've, I've done my uh, BCom business management. Um, then I went on to do my master's in oil and gas management. And right now I'm doing my dissertation. Uh, for my MBA in oil and gas management. So, I, I so mean, you're, you're, plus my experience. You're upskilling yourself in the, be in the best way possible to put yourself in a position whereby yeah. in your industry, there's going to be very few people, yeah. especially in this country, who, yeah. are, who, who will know more than you, who've got more experience than you, who are better than you. Because I, I want to, as I said, I want to, that's, that's where I see myself uh, I think you asked that earlier on. That's why I see myself as an asset to the country. Uh, people talk about Zim asset. I believe the people are the Zim asset. If you empower and encourage yourself so much to achieve a certain level, you become the asset. You are the product. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so that's, that's exactly, exactly what, what I'm, I'm trying, trying to achieve. achieve. I'm, I'm trying, trying to be the product. Because I love, I love when someone is, is is brave enough to call themselves. The, I want to be the Zim asset. Hundred percent. And I, and, and that's and that's and that's and that's and that's the sort of chat that we need that we need flowing around in this country. Yeah. But not just to say to say I'm going to be the Zim asset, but to be doing what it's what it takes to become that Zim asset. Exactly. Right? I just don't want to say it by by virtue of mouth. Correct. So I mean, I'll give you an example because I'm a bit of a uh, of a nutter at times. I I insistently invite people to my office. Why do I invite people to my office? Because I stick my degrees behind me. Where I sit, I've got my degrees behind me. Mm. So I've had old men come. And you know, when, when you speak to them on the phone, oh, you're young. Oh, I used to deal with your old man. Ah, Say, no problem. Come, let's meet at my office. Oh, you're actually educated. Oh, okay. I thought you just stumbled onto this. No, I didn't. No. You know what I mean? I also had to put in the work. And at the end of the day, that's how it is. That's how you should be. You should never be comfortable. My old man always used to say, poverty hurts. Mm. Work hard, my son. Mm. And it stuck with me. It's my WhatsApp status since the day he died. <laughs> Poverty hurts, work hard. And you really have to because if you do not establish a name for yourself or become what you want to be for yourself, you're going to be stuck. And poverty really does hurt. You know? but, but what would you say to someone who hasn't had that leg up, you know, that same leg up as you, who is a hard worker, who has got 10 degrees, you know, and, and who is grafting day in and day out to, to, to make... To, to make a success of themselves, what what would you say to that person? Uh, look, it takes a lot of prayer and a lot of luck, to be honest. I, I, I can't answer that because, as I said, I have not come on this platform and said, oh my God, I'm such a success story. That is incorrect. Uh, I'm, I'm someone who grew up well off, went through a slump and managed to bounce back. That is my story. And I can stand by that. Yeah. I didn't come here and say, oh my God, I've, I've, I've done amazing from scratch. No, that is very incorrect. But what I can safely say is that with the right amount of work, dedication and time, something has to give something just has to give and that's just the honest truth and i mean i can speak on other people's stories who've gone through that unfortunately i don't have the experience to talk about that yeah. uh but there are other people that have done that so yes i think that's the model in general you something has to give eventually i think um i think there's it's um you know there's there's been a lot to unpack in this and I, and, and you're very passionate you're very passionate about some of the things that you well, most things you talk about and and, and you know, when someone has digested the thought in their mind, you can you can tell it when they speak it, right? Because mm -hmm. it's not just umming and ahhing. It's it's things that you've thought about in depth, 
that now that that now you that now you're speaking about you know there's a you know you talk about succession and you talk about and you and and, and the importance of succession so basically you have succeeded you, you is that the word you succeeded your your, your ballet um no it's it's kind of correct but it's not mm-hmm. and you uh, have taken over after, after your ballet I, I think i've taken over my portion yes because there's a much bigger portion and there's a lot of um I, I want to say this again, honestly, on the platform. Um, I think I'm the pretty boy of the family. I like the nice things. Yeah, I, grew yeah. up, I grew up at a different time from my brother and sister. Okay. You know, they always laugh at me because they say, you grew up eating pasta. We were eating sadza every day. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, uh, as I said, I grew up more fortunate than them. But at the end of the day, the, he, especially my brother, he handles most of the firefighting. That's why when it comes to succession, it's, it's, it's really a topic I'd encourage you to speak to my brother about in particular because he's been bearing the brunt of the firefighting if anything i've managed to take things from this level to this level whilst he's been dealing with everything else mm. and i mean he's he's just a phenomenal phenomenal thinker that man is a thinker and he's he's just absolutely brilliant at what he does he can structure deals again structure um lack of capital is not a problem he will find a way to make it work whether it's um, him meeting up or linking up with this person with that person doing this and this he really connects the dots and he's phenomenal at that so i'll give him all the respect when it comes to succession and yeah. my mother as well um those are people that have understand and fully adopted succession but one thing uh, again that i said which is very important was a lifestyle adjustment when it comes to succession for any family who's to use the matriarch or patriarch um you have to realize there's a certain level of adjustment that you have to go through it's natural so be ready for that adjustment. Embrace it as part of the process. I appreciate where I am now because of where we've come from. Mm. I never would appreciate where we are now if I didn't go through that. If I was still getting pocket money, if I was still doing this, doing that. Yeah. So that's what I encourage the young people to do. Always have a plan for yourself, including now. I've got my own succession plan internally, which is to educate myself to the extent where I'm employable by anyone. That's why I said I want to be the most knowledgeable person in my industry. You know what I mean? Because I can take my CV anywhere else. And say, look, I've got look my what credentials. I've, I've got my credentials. <laughs> so employ me. Yeah. You know, know, that kind of thing. I've got my own succession plan as an individual, which is very important. So that's where we are. There's um I think you've 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 given us a lot today. A lot, a lot, a lot to digest, a lot to take in. I'm 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 curious to see the comments on 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 on, on this on this episode particularly. Please feel free to comment and like it and share it because I think what Des is speaking about here is is uh, valuable to a lot of us young people, you know, um, and um, and I think and, and and I think everyone can take something away from it. In fact, in the comment, leave in the comment section, leave what you've taken away from this from this episode. Um, Des, I'd love for you if you've got any parting words, any 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 last thing to say. Um, the the floor is yours. Thanks, Perry. Um, I think again, no man is an island. It's very important that you consult consult extensively. I think I've told you. I forgot to list the, my my people. I spoke about your Sidman Sambiwas, your Philip Maturity. I forgot to speak about the young guys who inspire me. I, I draw inspiration from so many young people uh, because you, I you consult. take inspiration from me. Of course, uh, come of course. On. I mean, Perry, I told you that you're doing something that no one else has done, and it's brave. This is a brave step. This is not easy. So I mean, I, I deal with. I was expecting more for laugh there, but, 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 <laughs> but thank, sorry, thank you for sorry, the compliment. Sorry, I, sorry, I appreciate it. That, that, I mean, that's kind. That's I, kind. I can. I can. No, I, I like name dropping because I want people to know my people were successful. Yes. I, I, I have such a passion in celebrating someone else's success. Mm. So you talk about your Tapua Zirevas, who's the head of um, Jeez, he's Mashallah brilliant, Land eh? Tobacco Company now. I mean, the first black MD like, of a tobacco company. And in I mean, he's like what? He's like thirty-six. Jeez, and well done, that man. You talk about Aaron Deninga, you know, young farmers president. Uh, you talk about so many different people. Uh, Gary Midge, Breitenstein, my God. I went to see his plant about Don't three weeks they. ago. My God. Unbelievable. Eh? Unbelievable. I mean, that is a national asset. You know what I mean? Uh, they're doing he's amazing running. things, the, 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 the Breitensteins. You know what I mean? And Gary's this, is a, well. this is a guy I used to drink with seven, eight years ago. Yeah. And we used to talk about rugby and, and taking shots and whatever. You know, yeah. This is someone who's come up. So these are the people that I draw inspiration from. And I encourage a lot of people on this platform to do the same. Consult, draw inspiration from people. Do not waste your energy on your ta- or your time on pocket watching. It's very important. Mm. Do things for yourself. Run your own race. Do things at your own pace. And sure, sure enough, if you are consistent, something has to give. I um, well, I take a lot of inspiration from you. Thank and, you. Um, and uh, and I uh, and I think you've done well. I think you'll continue to do well. I think um, you know, just 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 the way you speak 
and like I said earlier, the way the way you dissect things, you're a big inspiration for a lot of us. Um, and w- next time you go on a Kariba trip, I'd love to be invited. It's so my favorite place in the country. It's it's beautiful. You you let me know. I'd love I'd love to join you. All right, we no, even no join your sorrow. You know, bloody 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 b